It's just typical, isn't it? You spend decades waiting for a high quality, affordable resin printer, and then seven of them come along at once. This is the Creality LD-002R, a catchy little name if I do say so myself. And at under $300, it is the lowest cost resin printer that we have seen yet, which doesn't compromise on either build quality or print quality. Put simply, it is absolutely stunning. Featuring an all metal design with removable translucent orange UV filter cover, the total print build volume is 119 millimeters wide, 65 millimeters deep, and 160 millimeters tall, with a layer height of 10 to 50 microns and a screen resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels. Another neat feature is a built in charcoal air filter system, which should remove some of the nasty smells. However, it's got to be said that with some of the latest resins, they really don't smell at all or in fact they have quite a pleasant smell so that's maybe not such a huge feature but if you do work with some particularly smelly resins that should help a little. Also in the package you'll find a nice little bag of extras including some latex gloves, a small metal spatula, a plastic spatula for scraping the resin tray, some tools, screwdrivers, hex tools, that sort of thing, a paintbrush, which I still haven't worked out what that's for, some resin filter papers for when you need to empty out the resin tank to change it or clean it, and they've even included a spare FEP film which fits on the bottom of the resin tray with instructions on the back for how to do that. So that's definitely appreciated. That said, it's still not a complete beginner's kit. There are some extras that you'll need to buy if you're completely new to resin printing, uh, including at the very least some IPA solution or isopropyl alcohol at at least 90%. That's used to clean your prints and to clean everything else just to clean the resin off of stuff. And you'll also want some sort of plastic containers just to put things in. In terms of setup, well, there isn't any. It literally comes pre-leveled straight from the factory and ready to use. So all you need to do is plug the power cable and the USB in. The power cable, by the way, there's no power brick. It's the same sort of cable that you plug from your computer power supply into the wall. The standard IEC cable, sometimes called a kettle lead. All the power conversion is done in the base here. So if you need to replace the cable or extend it or buy a new one because your country's plug is different, that should be very easy compared to if you have, say, a non-standard power brick. The USB port is located on the front left, which is really convenient. And once you've plugged in your USB, you just select the print menu, find your file and hit print. A USB stick is included in the pack and it contains a pre-sliced, Eiffel Tower test print. So you can just place that in, hit print, and it'll come out perfectly. Or at least that's mostly been my experience. That said, if you do need to level the machine again, it's really easy to do with the auto leveling function. You just unscrew the top, uh, let it push down, and then it does it all itself, really. It couldn't be simpler. Now the Creality LD002R runs the Chitu firmware, which means you will need to use the Chitu box software. Now in the latest version, a profile for this printer is actually included. So just head to the Chitu box website, download the latest version and you'll be all set. There's no additional configuration to enter. Curiously enough, the version that's included on the USB stick is not actually the latest version and doesn't include a profile. Now there is no network connectivity, no Wi-Fi or ethernet port. So in order to print to the printer, you will need to use a USB stick. It's incredibly simple, but it would have been nice to see some sort of built-in server for sending files over the network. Now, unfortunately, on my initial print, I did run into some kind of USB read errors. However, since moving the printer, perhaps I jostled something and reformatting the USB disk, uh, it all worked fine from then on. So none of the 10 or so prints I've done yet have failed at all which is incredibly impressive. I didn't tweak any settings. I've used auto supports in Chitu box, medium at 10% density for the latest ones, though my earlier prints were a bit heavier on the density. Just to be honest, everything has just worked out of the box. These minis are all from Cast and Play Patreon. I haven't had time to paint them yet. Obviously, I did try to do a quick wash to try and highlight the details since Elegoo Grey is otherwise a little tricky to see on camera, but pro tip, resin just sucks up washes. 
Uh, I would need to prime them first, which I didn't have time for. Hopefully though, you can still see in the video the quality that I've got out of it. And obviously there's still a bit of cleanup that I need to do in terms of where the supports were. I've also been really impressed with the speed at about 20 to 30 millimeters an hour you can print out a whole plate of little minis in two to three hours. The only time you're going to need to leave it on overnight is when you're printing something a lot taller. It's the height that affects how long the print is with a, a fixed rate per layer. So should you buy the Creality LD002R despite the name? Well, to be honest, there's very little to differentiate this printer from the other two, three, sort of market leaders at the moment. And I think Creality knows this, which is why they've come in at a lot more aggressive price point. And that's obviously great because it means that you can grab a real bargain. I really don't think it'll be possible to make a resin printer with an all metal design, smooth bearings and such reliable printing uh, any cheaper than this, really. I suspect we've sort of hit a plateau in terms of the, the bottoming out of price and the quality of technology that you can fit inside one of these. We reached that same point with FDM printing a while ago and I think this is pretty much now the epitome of what we can do with resin printing, at least for the time being. Don't get me wrong, you can certainly buy a cheaper resin printer. They do exist, but they're going to be made of plastic, they're going to be prone to warping, so you'll get a lot more failed prints. Believe me, I've been there, I will not do that again, and I don't recommend you do either. So if you've been waiting for prices to drop, then I think now is a great time to jump in. Just bear in mind that there's a lot more sort of overhead involved with resin printing compared to FDM printers. The materials you're working with are more dangerous. They're quite sticky and horrible to deal with. You need to wear gloves, possibly a mask and some eye protection. You need to use more dangerous chemicals like IPA solution to wash things in. It's just, it's a lot more hassle working with resin than it is with an FDM printer. Though of course the quality of the prints that you get out is a lot better. Anyway, thanks for watching this review. I hope it's helped you in some way. And thanks to Creality who have given us an another one of these incredible printers to give away to one lucky viewer. Just head on over to the link in the description to the article at makeuseof.com and at the bottom of that review you'll find a Gleam giveaway widget. Pop your details in there and you'll be in with a chance of winning. Also be sure to tell us what you're going to do with your printer if you win. The winner will be contacted in four weeks so please keep an eye on your junk mailbox in case it finds its way in there. Good luck and please hit like on this video. I know it seems like an absolutely meaningless notion but it really does does help the channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more weekly hardware reviews, gadget giveaways, and more from all of us at makeuseof.com. Until next time.